Hi, I'm Kev Cox, Fox Rage. Today we're going to look at all the best beginner's lure tips. To just get out fishing, you want a nice, comfortable rod and reel in your hand. Um, today I'll be using the Twitch and Jig. It's absolutely perfect for perch fishing. Uh, it's paired up with a 1,000 size reel, super fine braid, light jig head, light fluorocarbon. We'll look at connecting all that up shortly. Um, this setup is absolutely perfect for just going out, getting bites, catching a few fish. So for my stepped up fishing or more, more targeting pike and bigger perch, I'd be looking at using a rod more like a bait force. Um, this is paired up with a two and a half thousand reel, so slightly bigger. If we're fishing bigger water and want to go even bigger, we'd step up to the 4,000 reel. Just gives us that slightly bigger line capacity, casting a bit further, and it balances these heavier rods out better than a small size reel. Uh, with this, we're using thicker braid now, more like 20, 25 kilos, uh, through to a really thick fluorocarbon trace uh, or a wire trace, depending on the, the venues we're fishing. So tip two, once you've been out and got your nicely balanced rod and reel, you need to get some braid onto the spool. Um, here we're going to use some jig silk, so just shortly I'll show you how we get that onto the reel. It's very easy, but we do need to ensure that there's no slippage on the, um, on the spool, otherwise it'll cause you lots of problems with your braid twisting and, uh, and playing fish. So to, um, to load your reel, first of all we need to get a knot that's going to be like a noose that's going to slip down nice and tight onto the spool. Um, so my personal preference is quite simple, take a length of braid, length of braid, make a loop in it, come back through that loop, one, two, three times. As always, some saliva on there to moisten that down. Just pull it pinch tight. You can already trim that up slightly. And then we need to then transfer that onto our reel. So um, you don't need a full rod set up here, but you do need at least a butt section if you come down through the eye instead of so the opposite way down onto your reel so then we lower the loop down around the spool and just carefully pull that down nice and tight so that sits nice and snugly on the spool uh, I'm not one that really likes to put any um, cellar tape or any sticky tape to hold it down, I find that just bands just nicely and then we can start to just put a couple of turns onto the spool and now we need to look at really tensioning the, the braid up, um, obviously I don't normally do this on the bank, normally do it at home, um, there's loads and loads of ways of doing this, for me personally I like to get my feet out, stick a pencil straight through the spool, in between my big toes, get some tension on and um, then hold the braid in a, in a damp bit of, um, bit of tissue or dank cloth, get some tension on it and load the spool up. Uh, there's loads and loads of ways out there. Some people like to put the braid in water, some like it to come off a certain way. Uh, for me, you're always gonna get some sort of line twist um, over the use of a spinning reel, but you know it's always been effective for myself. So uh, get out there and give it a go. And so here, as you can see, is a prime example of a perfectly finished reel. It's um, loaded right up flush with the top of the spool. Uh, you don't want to overload this, as you'll find that you'll get lots of wind knots, lots of peeling off of the braid, uh, cause you lots of problems. And likewise, if you under underfill the spool, you'll be really struggling to cast the distance that you should be achieving uh, with a nice balanced setup. So tip three is connecting your braid to your fluorocarbon. Um, obviously most lure fishing is done with a, with a high quality braid to give you much more sensitivity through the line. Um, however, you don't want this bright yellow right at the finish. You want a nice um, translucent fluorocarbon. So right now I'll show you how to connect these two the way that I do. Okay, so we need to connect our braided main line to our fluorocarbon hook link. Um, so right now I'll show you the, the knot that I use. Um, it's what I would call a double uni. Uh, I'm sure there's others out there calling it slightly different. So first of all, take your braided main line and then your fluorocarbon leader. Run the two alongside each other. I always start with the braid, come back on yourself to form a loop. 
go through that loop once, twice, three times, four times, one more, five times. We can pull them up lightly, as always, good bit of moisture on that, stop any friction. Just pull that up finger tight, exactly the same with the, with the fluorocarbon, form a loop, go through once, twice, three times, and four times. I tend to go through one less on the, um, on the fluorocarbon than I do on the braid. Tighten that down, a bit of moisture, and then just gently pull the two together, and there we go. This is not a knot that you want to be putting massive, massive amounts of stress on to cinch it down tight. Um, it will pull tight. You're only fishing light braid, light line. Um, if you're snapping this when you're pulling it tight, you are over testing it. Um, done correctly, it won't fail and it'll be a brilliant knot. Um, all it's left to do is just to trim up the tag ends. And there we have it. So tip four, and this is connecting your now fluorocarbon leader to your jig head of choice, or some people would prefer to use a clip. Uh, for me personally, for my smaller perch fishing, I would always tie direct to the jig head. I think it's a much um, di more direct contact with the lure. And fishing smaller jig heads, it just gives you that little bit more control. As soon as I switch over to either fishing bigger lures or for my pike fishing, then I look at tying on a, a quick clip there instead of the jig head, um, but it would be exactly the same knot. So uh, now we'll have a look at that. So now we need to um, attach our jig head or our, um, our lure clip onto our fluorocarbon. Uh, myself, I use what I believe is a blood knot. Uh, it's quite straightforward, very strong, doesn't let you down. Um, very simple. Through the eye of the hook, back up on itself, bring the line around itself six times. Back through your first loop. And as with all, all knots, a good bit of moisture on there. Stop any friction. And then just gently ease it down. So tip five, uh, we've now got a braid loaded up. We've attached a fluorocarbon leader. We've attached the hook link, um, but we do need to determine obviously how long this is going to be. Uh, for myself, two foot would be the shortest, um, maybe six foot the longest, but somewhere in between three to four foot is absolutely ideal. If you're fishing really clear water like we've got today, slightly longer, um, but certainly no less, no less than two foot. Okay, so today's sixth and final tip is a simple one is just rigging up your lure. Um, the way this is done can really affect the actual lure. So me personally, I prefer to hook the lure slightly higher up than centre, come through to the length of your hook and come through and that itself gives the balance a lot higher up, um, producing a lot more wobble from the belly. If you want to reduce that, then by all means put your hook point more central or lower and lower that centre of gravity and that again will affect the lure in the water. What I would recommend is to try digging them up both ways and pull them through the water, have a look what you like and which the fish prefer on the day. Uh, hopefully you'll go out and catch a few more fish. <laughs>